Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Salat al-Isha The last prayer uh, Of the furud Meaning those obligatory prayers When is it best to pray Salat al-Isha? Is it better to pray it to delay it to a later part of the evening or pray it in the beginning of its time? So this is the question. So we have to look into a, into a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to get an indication about what is best for us. And we'll also talk very briefly about the differences between the ulama regarding this issue and their various dalil or evidence for this. عن عبد الله بن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنهما قال أتم النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فخرج عمر فقال صلاة يا رسول الله رقد النساء والصبيان فخرج رأسه يقطر يقول لولا أن أشق على أمتي أو على الناس لِيَمَرْتُهُمْ بِهَذِهِ الصَّلَاةِ هَذِهِ سَاعَةِ رواه بخاري ومسلم عبد الله بن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنهما said that the darkness of the night had come upon us you know, where the night became pitch black, letting them know that it was after the time when Isha had already begun. So Umar, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, came to the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he said, the Salat, O Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the women, have be the women and the children have begun to nod off they're, they're, they're napping because of their severely tired. So then the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stuck his head out of the house and it was wet from, you know, possibly taking a shower or what have you. From his, from his uh, ghusl, yes. And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if I didn't have fear that this would be a difficulty upon my nation or upon the people, depending on the, the narrator had doubt whether the Prophet ﷺ said if it was, if I didn't have uh, doubt or fear for my ummah or was it that he ﷺ said fear upon the people, that it would be a harm on the people, uh, then I would have ordered them to pray the prayer at this time, meaning delaying the time in the later part of the night. And this was collected in Bukhari and Muslim. In this hadith of the Prophet wasallam, the ulama, they differ over the issue which arises from this hadith which is whether to delay the Isha prayer to the last part of the night or to pray it in the beginning of its uh, time, as soon as it comes in. And which one is better? So a group of the ulama, a group of the scholars, they say they use as evidence that the main habit of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was to pray Isha in its earlier time. This was the habit. This is what the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did on a regular basis is he prayed the Isha prayer during its, uh, in the earlier time of Isha. When it came in, they, they prayed the Salat al-Isha. So that group of ulama that say it's better to pray it in its earliest time that's what they use as evidence. They use as evidence the fact that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his habit was to pray it in its earlier time. 
and he wouldn't delay it. And that he only delayed it uh, on rare occasions. And this was either to uh, show that it was permissible to delay the Isha prayer, or out of an ex out of uh, an excusable reason, you know, some some excuse that made it so it became necessary to delay the Salat al Isha. So for those two reasons, either that there was some reason for it, or to also illustrate. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to illustrate for us that it was permissible to pray Isha uh, by delaying it. And they also argue that if it would be, if it had been better to delay the prayer, the Isha prayer, then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would have did that on a regular basis. So this is the first state, uh, first uh, group of scholars hold this view. This is the first opinion which is held by uh, a group of the ulama and that is their evidence. Their evidence is that the Prophet Wasallam didn't do this on a regular basis. He didn't delay the prayer on a regular basis, the Salat al-Isha. The other group, which is actually the majority of the of the scholars, Jamhur uh, uh, al-Ulama, the majority of the scholars, they hold that it is better to delay Salat al-Isha. And they use as evidence this hadith, the one we just uh, read, and other ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they said the fact that he did not do this on a regular basis is not proof that it is better to uh, to pray it in its earliest time. The fact that he did, did not delay it on a regular basis is not proof that it is uh, better to pray it in its earlier time. This is what the majority of the ulama say. And then they say, and so that does not prohibit the fact that delaying Salat al-Isha is better. And the only thing that prohibited the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi or the reason why the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam did not make that a, a, a regular habit of praying the Salat al-Isha by delaying it was due to the fact that he was fearful that it would be difficult upon his nation, upon the Ummah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So it was out of his, his mercy Alayhi Salatu Wasalam that he didn't do it. So this is how they look at this, this evidence. So then they are saying that due to this hadith, this hadith illustrates that it's better to actually delay the prayer, Salat al-Isha, delaying it meaning that it's still in its time, but it's in the la la latter part of Salat al-Isha, not in the beginning. They're saying that it's better meaning that it's more ajr to delay it. This is what majority of the scholars say. This is what Jamhur says. And that is their, their evidence. They're saying that that is not a hujjah, and I think we don't. it's not necessary for us to repeat that, but inshallah ta'ala, hopefully it's clear that the Prophet wasallam, out of mercy for his, his nation, that he preferred to pray it in its earlier time so it wouldn't be a difficulty upon the people coming to the prayer. Some of the benefits we gain from this hadith, as Sheikh Ali Bassam rahimahullah ta'ala mentions, he says that it is, uh, one of the benefits is that it is better to actually delay Isha prayer, you know, to it, its latter time instead of praying it at the very uh, beginning of its time. And the only thing that uh, prevents us from delaying that Isha prayer is because to it, it, in order to prohibit 
the difficulty it would be upon the nation by delaying upon it, you know, for the women and children that might come to the masjid and the elderly men or people who have uh, things they need to do that's urgent or they have to get up to go to back to work or what have you, then in these situations, it, it uh, may be a difficulty upon them. And of course, Islam uh, encourages us and it's from the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, to take the easiest of the two uh, halal matters. And this brings up the Qaeda, the fiqh principle, which is Al Mushakka Tajlibu at Taysir. That difficulty in something necessitates taking the easy path. If, as long as there's a lawful path, then the Sharia encourages us to take the easier path. Of the two paths as long as they're both lawful another benefit of this hadith and this is what Sheikh Ali Bassam is saying here is that difficulty when there's a difficulty it necessitates or it is uh, the reason to take the easier path and this shows us the mercy of the Sharia another benefit of this hadith Is this hadith illustrates for us that deeds have different levels because the Prophet وسلم, said if he were not fearful upon his nation that this difficulty then he would have ordered them to delay the you know to delay the prayer to make the prayer in that latter time but showing us that the, both of them are permissible and that deeds have different levels that one of those times is better than the other and it just depends upon the condition of the people so for example if you have a community of pre uh, predominantly maybe young men that are strong and, and don't have uh, you know early work schedules or something like this that you know that the, the community can deal with that then perhaps in that situation it's better than you can delay the Salatul Isha. Or uh, if it's vice versa, you know most of the community, they're professionals or what have you, and they, they have early appointments and early uh, job schedules and so forth, then, we, then the leadership should take that in mind when uh, establishing the prayer time, especially if there's a Salatul Jama'ah in a masjid that they should take those things into consideration, take the congregation's uh, status uh, under consideration when determining the time for prayer, as long as it's in the time for prayer. Another benefit that we gain from this hadith is this hadith also illustrates for us, as the, as the sheikh says, Rahimahullah ta'ala, may Allah bless him with Jannah to produce, he said this hadith also illustrates for us that some of the women and some of the young children used to uh, pray in jama'ah in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, which we don't find. We find that rare in some of the masajid here. And, and in fact, maybe it's even more common here than you find in many of the Muslim lands. In many of the Muslim lands, especially the Arab countries, you find that from their own custom that the women... Uh, do not attend the masjid, even Yomul Jumwa, unless it's like the Prophet Wasallam's masjid, the Haramain, or something like this. But generally, the women do not attend the Jumwa prayer in some of the Muslim countries, and so, especially some of the Arab countries, and that's from their custom. But even during the time of the Prophet Wasallam, as long as there was a fitna, the women and the children, uh, you know, enjoyed even praying the Isha prayer in congregation and the Fajr prayer as we know from other ahadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam those are some of the uh, benefits of this hadith that the Shaykh mentioned another last important thing I want to emphasize is the importance of considering the congregation and of course this does not mean that, for example, if a person is tied to the jama'at, meaning they 
live in a locality where it's easy for them to get to the masjid to pray Salatul Jama'ah. It is better for them to pray, even if the Jama'ah prays earlier, you know, prays in the time at the earlier time or whenever the Imam has decided, the Imam and the administration have determined the time for the congregational prayer, then it's better to pray with the congregational prayer than to stay at your home by yourself and delay the prayer just to get the, the, the better of the time to delay the prayer. But it's better to pray the Salat and Jama'ah. So it shows us, the again, this illustrates for us the different level of deeds, that some deeds are greater than others. And Salat al-Jama'ah is very important. And we ask Allah the Almighty for us to be blessed to make Salat al-Jama'ah more often. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many shortcomings and bless us with tawfiq and bless us with ikhlas, with thabat ala sunnah, وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم